Alright, welcome back to another Mech Lab Monday. This week we are doing the Royal Mech Start. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna just advance the day, get our soldier packet. And... Did we get anything good? Uh, double heat sink, proto double heat sink, double heat sink. Hopefully we have a kit to use them. I do like seeing the augmented thunder, that's always nice to get. Uh, we got a mask, large laser. Though ER larges are going to be really hot, so probably not going to be able to make use of it. I do love to see the Beagle Probe. We're going to be able to make one of our mechs a lot more accurate. Tandem, Inferno, Acid, oh yeah. Nice set of SRM ammo. Uh, Goss Double Bin is way too much for a single rifle. It's, it's, unless you're running two Goss rifles, you do not need a Double Bin. Uh, UAC 20. Two Double Bins, that's actually enough to run a UAC 20. But what are the odds we actually got a UAC 20 to pump in there? Uh, ER LRM, I mean, it's good-ish uh, for longer range en encounters, mostly just because you can get into the optimal range quicker. Okay, so we got like all the best SRM ammo for early game. Tandem, Inferno, Acid, and LK. So if we have the capacity to make an SRM boat, we're going to be able to make a really good SRM boat. Uh, got double bin of AC-20. Cool. That's enough to run uh, AC-20. Uh, I mean, two single bins also works, but this just gives you two extra rounds for the same tonnage in the same slots, so... Good to see. A uh, pair of ER smalls, that's actually quite useful. Uh, so early game, you're going to be running medium lasers a lot. Medium lasers, of course, being 25 damage for 9 heat at 360 meters, but they weigh a ton. So with two ER smalls, you have the same tonnage to do 32 damage instead of 25, and generate 12 heat instead of 9. But it's two instances of damage, so if one misses, the other one still might hit. You do lose a little bit of range there, but not that much, so pretty good. Some Deadfire LRMs, eh. The minus two accuracy makes them really hard to use, early game especially. Uh, once you have targeting systems, it's not such a big deal, but early game Deadfire LRMs are really rough. Smoke Mortar, okay. So ideally with Mortar Smoke Ammo, you'll have like a Mortar 2. <laughs> anything more than that's just kind of overkill. Um, then we got some Chaff LRM. Cool. I actually like that it's a half bin. So it's only 60 shots, but you should only really be firing Chaff out of an LRM 5, LRM 10 at most anyway. So that's, that's exactly how much Chaff you need if you're going to run Chaff in one of your mechs. UAC 5 safe is whatever. 7.5 alpha strikes, reduced chance to explode. Okay. Incendiary MRMs, probably not going to have an MRM or enough ammo to run it. Uh, if we did have the ammo to run, like, if we did have an MRM, uh, Incendiary is not really the ammo you want to run. Um, just because you lose so much damage and you're not going to have the heat to really overheat people. Then again, if it's an MRM-40 and you have another bin of non-incendiary ammo, I would absolutely slap a bin of incendiary in, because with an MRM-40, you're generating 80 heat if all the missiles hit. That is enough to completely shut down, or not necessarily shut down, but completely prevent a single heat sink cooling mech from doing anything for at least one round. And then the extra burn strength and duration is nice too. Machine gun incendiary. Cool. It's actually my favorite machine gun ammo. <laughs> uh, since machine guns, I, you know, they don't really do damage anyway, so you might as well go for crits while also building up a little bit of heat. Capacitator, there's no way we're ever going to have piloting early game to use that. UAV is actually really good to see. Really, really good to see. Support slot, so it doesn't take any tonnage, just toss it in. And then you can just UAV ping on a turn where your mech warrior just has no hit chance. Really good for the early game. Uh, we got some streaks. Hopefully we have ammo to use them because that's pretty good. So 4.5 tons to do 60 damage with high accuracy. And you only need one bit of ammo really. Even if you're running, you know, 6, 8, 10 streaks. 
just because they only fire if they're going to hit. AC2 precision ammo, if we have an AC2, that's just a no-brainer. Toss it in, two evasion ignore, good times. Got a bunch of safe ammo. We got an ECM, love to see it. That will be very helpful. We did get streak ammo, cool. So we can actually use our streaks. We got some SRM counter missile. Again, we have like all the ammo to make a really amazing medium mech SRM boat. Some regular mortar ammo, okay. LB20 slug, okay, I'd rather that be cluster. UAC 10, 10 shots, that's not enough. <laughs> ammo rec 5, 30 shots, that's not enough. Uh, hyper velocity, or high velocity, hyper velocity, yeah. Hyper velocity auto cannons tend to explode on me, so I'm not a fan of them. All the LB LB5 slug in the world and no cluster. At least we got the LB2 cluster, but yeah. I mean, yeah, it's the same as running an AC5 with better range, but at the same time, if I'm running an LB5, I'd rather have the cluster. Two exchangers. Two. What? Best soldier start ever. We have a UAC2. Did we have UAC2 ammo? Or just... So there's UAC10. I know we have UAC5. But... We also have UAC20, but we do not have UAC2 ammo. That's unfortunate. I would absolutely slap a UAC2 into an early game mech. Uh, regular AC2, okay. LRM5 and a heatsink. Alright, I'm quite happy with that. Quite happy indeed. Most... The most important things to note. Exchangers, ECM, Beagle Probe. Amazing. Um, unfortunately... Oh boy. So those are the mechs we got. Uh, before we even start looking at them, let's check the store, see if there's anything really interesting. Uh, we are in clan space. What? Excuse me? Hello, Commander. The Argo may not be fully... Okay, so Royal Mechs is clan start. Uh-oh. <laughs> I mean, it can't be as bad as Primitive Clan, right? So we have a Phoenix Hawk that already has an IFF jammer and... Okay. Okay. So we have SLDF mechs. And the we're in clan space. That's awesome. So yeah, we have a Royal Double Heatsink kit. XL engine, 270 core, slick sweet, SLDF stand, like, the SLDF fire control system is so good because it's just night vision. That's amazing. Alright, what do we got in our wyvern? We have only single heat sink cooling here. Yeah, not enough hard points to really make this an SRM boat. Alright. Yeah, we got some work to do. These mechs are not great. Again, SLDF stuff is nice. Like, plus one piloting, plus one tactics. Good deal. Night vision, good deal. So, the Wyvern is not actually an SLDF mech. Right? Yeah, because it just has standard cockpit components. But it does start with Indo and an XL engine, so that's cool. Then we have a Locust with an XL engine as well. Does everything have an XL engine? Royal Double Heat Sink Locust. What? <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, that's hilarious. Alright. And then we've got a Thorn with a Royal Double Heat Sink Kit, XL Engine. All right. What are we gonna do with these? So immediately I see Phoenix Hawk and immediately I think, what, what's the biggest auto cannon I can actually run? And unfortunately I think the answer is none of them. I mean, we have an AC-2 with precision ammo. 
which establishes it's a long range mech because plus 30 to all range brackets means our minimum range would actually be 150. Oof. That's that's a lot. <laughs> that means you don't ever want to get anywhere close. Do we have a ballistic hard point on one of our smaller mechs? No, we do not. Because ideally, if you're going to have a mech firing across the battlefield from super far away, putting it on the smallest mech possible means that that's... You could put your high armor medium mechs to the front and have your lightly armored, you know, tissue paper mechs far away. But, unfortunately, that is not an option. Actually, honestly, that's... Like, wow. So we have a lot of energy hard points. We got two missile hard points on the Wyvern. Two. That is so unfortunate. Because we have all the ammo we need to make a really good SRM boat. But we just don't have a mech chassis that can be an SRM boat. Alright, now that we've got an idea of what we got. Now that we know especially that we're looking for energy weapons, I will instantly buy the Clan Pulse Laser. Uh, Engine Heat Sink's plus four. Unfortunately, you have to have a really big core to run it. That's a Clan Heat Sink kit. For four million. That would be like all of our starting money. But honestly, what else are we gonna buy with it? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a clan heat seat kit. You know what? If you're in clan space, you might as well take advantage of it. All right. So who needs a heat sink kit? The wyvern. The wyvern needs a heat sink kit. Uh, that's a problem. That, that is a problem. Minus three heat sink tons. Are there three double heat sink clans that we can buy? Maybe? No. No, there is not. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Okay. Do we have a 250 plus core that we can put into it? Maybe? Store? No. Even a 240 core is not enough because it still needs one extra heat sink. Alright. Well, that was a waste of 4 million sea bills. That was a waste of 4 million sea bills. Yeah, uh. I mean, we could rip the core out of the Oss Scout and put it in the Wyvern. That is an option. That is absolutely an option. We will lose a lot of boom room. But at the same time, we will make this thing so much more maneuverable and less likely to explode. Yeah, we're gonna do it. Alright, I'll scout. I need your core. Honestly, not gonna mess with anything else because... I mean, I say that. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the Beagle Probe too. Alright. I would absolutely right. keep the Oz oh, Scout yeah, just done. sitting there, though, instead of storing it, just so that once I get another core, I can slap it in there. All right. What are we going to do specifically here? We're going to drop the LRM, right? Because we're going to make this thing zippy. We're going to make this thing get close and in your face. And... I do like this SRMs, and we ha do have some good SRM ammo, but I think the streaks are going to be better. Um, so, no, internals, engine core, 280, boom. Alright, drop all these heat sinks. Boom, like that. Uh, clan heat sink kit, and... 
we're going to toss in the exchanger. All right. So we now have all the heat in the world we could possibly need. I would, I would absolutely love another SRM-6, really. Just a pair of SRM-6s, put in a little bit of specialty ammo, have a good day. But I think we're going to go SRM Streak. Mmm, then again. Okay, real quick. Let's just, for the sake of thoroughness, to make sure I didn't miss another SRM. No, I did not. Where are we? Are we going to need to travel? Yes, we're going to need to travel. Okay. So, um, filter, half skull. And wait, and wait, and wait. Alright. Okay, what about one skull? And wait, and wait, and wait. None, huh? How about 1.5 skulls? No kidding. There is one 1.5 skull planet. It's only 24 days away. Alright. Yeah, I'd rather go to the one and a half skull planet. But first, uh, definitely starting in engineering. Welcome to engineering. Grabbing some power system upgrade. Nice. Boom. Welcome to the grease. Uh, we are going to absolutely start some work on the wyvern by dropping the LRM10 because we're definitely getting rid of that and upgrading the engine core and the cooling. Without a single doubt. We're also going to drop the jump jets, free up a little bit of extra tonnage, and case is kind of trash. Case 2 is amazing. Don't get me wrong. Not all cases created equal. But, yeah. We are going to drop in the clan heatsink kit, as well as the exchanger. We're going to make this thing a nice little toasty... If we can get another SRM-6, we'll absolutely do SRM-6s with some lasers, but if not, I think I'm going to go streak 4, streak 2, large pulse, medium pulse. And then, you know, see what we have left after that. So that's four days, and then we'll come back and readdress the rest of it. Oh, there's still a heat sink in the head. Okay. I'll have to remember to take that out. Phoenix Hawk. Okay, Phoenix Hawk has a 270 core. And a lot of jump jets. We don't we don't need those. No, no, and no. Also, dropping the case, dropping the machine guns. We already have a garden ECM here. Definitely want to add in the Beagle Pro. Okay. And this is also a no-brainer for the exchanger. So we got 74, 75. We have overcooling by one. And all we have left is ballistic hard points. But we have this AC2. Weighs six tons. We have AC2 precision ammo. We have an ER large. Snub nose PPC has damage fall off. So we actually do not want to pair an snub with the AC2. A pair of ER larges, on the other hand, makes sense. So max range 840, max range 960. So we can stay really far away, run around, and shoot people with our large lasers and our AC2. Kind of a bit of a waste to have one of our heavier mechs doing that. But then by the same token, that's like, it's an effective way of fighting. 
So the 25 damage is going to have two evasion ignore. And the ER larges are going to do 45 damage each. So we're doing 115 damage at crazy range. Hmm. I mean, we could just drop the mediums, call it a day. We don't need to worry about maxing armor if we're staying at really long range. And that would actually completely fix our heat. Um, actually, it would more than fix our heat. But, is that really the way I want to go? I mean, AC2s are good at really long range sniper fights. But again, we have a Phoenix Hawk that would be basically out of the fight. Like, anyone shooting at the Phoenix Hawk would be shooting, ignoring targets closer to them to shoot across the battlefield. Because, like, if we drop the medium lasers, stick the ER large in the arm as well. Okay, I think we actually would still need the exchanger. No? Wait, how are we sinking 72? Royal double heat sink. Ah! The royal double heat sink kit has an extra minus 6 heat per turn. Wait, no? Huh. What is going on here? Why are we sinking 72 heat per turn? So, double heat sink, sink 60. The Royal Double Heat Sink Kit says it sinks an extra 6 heat per turn. That should be 66. Where is... Where is the extra 6 coming from? Where is the extra six coming from? There's no engine heat sinks. It's not a quirk. What is... I am really actually confused here. Where is that extra six heat sinking coming from? Hmm. But yeah, I think I'm gonna run it just like that. Sure. Sounds good. Shouldn't be too hard. Uh, locusts. We definitely need to armor up. The locust and the thorn, they're only 20 tonners, they need all the armor they can get. So we have minus four heat sink tons, hence the four double heat sinks. Two mediums, two smalls, and a medium, as far as pulse lasers go. I think I'm gonna drop the two medium pulse lasers, give it two medium lasers, and then use the extra two tons to armor up completely. Alright, there's all the front armor. Are we actually gonna have tonnage left over? We are. Okay. So. If we drop the back armor down. And since it's an XL engine, might as well drop it all evenly. One, one. Eh, whatever. Good enough. So that gives us one extra ton, which allows us to drop in an ECM. Boom. Nice. A little bit more defense. It's completely fine on heat. Yeah, so this, this also is 72 cooling from just the Royal Double 
uh, heat sink kit. Cool. That's crazy. So even though it just says minus 6 heat per turn, it's actually minus 12, apparently. Alright. I'll take it. That's a pretty solid locus. Right. I'll get it. Pretty solid kit. locust. Alright, and then we have a thorn. This thing is slower than the locust, so it definitely needs the extra armor. Uh, the mask is interesting, but we are not going to have enough piloting to use that very effectively very often. Um, it does it does damage and crit the legs when it fails, so you can actually keep using it. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can keep using it, even though you have a fail chance, and just keep taking crits and damage to your legs. Not usually advisable, and it's definitely not a solution to, oh, I don't have enough movement. So, 6-9, I believe, is max of 3 evasion. Not great. So what can we do instead? What can we do instead? So, we do have these medium pulse lasers. I think we're going to put those on the wyvern. And... I mean, I think we might just... replace the small with an ER small, take the mask off and add more armor and call it a day. Sure. Drop mask, uh, stick the double heat sinks in the side torso so they're a little bit better protected. Max armor. And we might still be a little under tonnage, yeah. 0.18 under tonnage. But I honestly think that the armor is going to be more effective than the mask. Although, actually. Now that I think about it, if we drop our armor back to 19.5, we could replace the ER small laser with a medium laser if we had one, which we do. And we absolutely will. Alright, Oscout, I'm taking your laser. And gimme. Thank you. All right. I'll let you know when that's done. Thorn. Dropping mask, replacing small laser with a medium laser, and moving the heat sinks to the side torso, then maxing front armor. Uh, I'll take a little bit off of the back, I think. We are going to have to be very careful positioning our light mechs. Because if anything gets behind them, they're likely to explode. Very, very likely to explode. Honestly, there's also the argument to be made for dropping the center torso armor a little bit more. And raising up the side torso armor a little bit more. Because the structure on the side torsos is five lower than the structure on center. So even though it has two less armor on the center torso, the center torso will be able to take three more damage than the side torsos. And again, if we lose one torso, center, center or side, the mech goes down. So, sure, let's do that. All right. Logged and noted. And now we can begin travel. Uh, right, right, I almost always forget. Hiring hall. Anyone interesting? Need something, Chief? Aye, aye. Vala is ex-military mech warrior technician spacer. Eh, it's not that interesting. Alright. Next planet. Commander on deck. Yep, one and a half skull, that's exactly where I want to go. By Beautiful. 
So now we just wait for the power conduits to pop. And there we go. Immediately jump in and get the second mech bay. Boom. Boom. Continue working. And I might readdress the Phoenix Hawk depending on what we find in the shop at the planet we're going to. I might slightly reconsider the whole long range sniper medium. Hey Alright, we've got 1.4 million left, which is plenty to get the second mech bay working at 100%. Alright. One and we arrive. Waypoint reached, Commander. Oh wow. Huh. Okay. I think that's the first time I've actually uh, arrived on a Wartech 2C map uh, during a conflict. That's that's literally the first time I've Man. seen that pop up. And it's telling us about these. So we could join a priority for one or the other. In any case, uh, let's check first off the hiring hall. And we have Arbiter, ex military merchant mech warrior. Yes, Commander. Eh. Commander. Uh, Doyle is mech warrior gladiator. Okay. What can I do for you? Ian Andrew. Um, <laughs> what? Diplomatic immunity? This pilot has diplomatic protections through armor crit immune. Okay. Officer, klutz, I, I never, I refuse to run klutz. Because it's so easy to get knocked down. And just having your mech warrior punch out because they got knocked down is terrible. Okay, so nobody we're interested in hiring. Does the store have anything fun? Like, say, SRM 6? No, SRM 4. Okay. There is a clan ER medium, which I will absolutely buy. New <clears throat> systems That's just a flat upgrade for any of our mechs that are running a medium laser and have heat to go, or have, you know, leftover heat available. Um, the SRM 4. So. We can either run SRM-10 with specialty ammo, or we can run Streak-6, which gives us plus one evasion ignore, plus one accuracy. But I think the specialty ammo is better, so I will buy the SRM-4 clan. New weapon systems available. Clan XXL, just in the shop, chilling. I mean, it's 12 million, 15 million, whatever. Uh, so definitely have our price range. 255 core, so we could have actually traveled here and bought that and kept our Oscout operational, but that's fine. Uh, Artemis ammo, again, we don't have an Artemis. I don't think I already said it. Last, last shop also had Artemis ammo, and I didn't, I guess I didn't. I thought it, but I don't think I said it, is that Artemis ammo is great in the shop and all, except we don't have the fire control system for it. Nice so, to see you down here. that is what we've got. Those supplies are what we have available. Don't forget to take the heat sink out of the head. Okay. So, first things first, SRM4 clan. Toss it in the center. In part because it's best protected, and in part because... Sure, why not, basically. Um, so we have SRM10, and we absolutely want to fire a specialty ammo of some kind, but which one? I mean, Acid does 50% extra damage to armor, and increases the damage they take from other sources. That is absolutely a no-brainer, even with the minus one accuracy. Like, trading one accuracy for an extra 50% damage on a fresh target is great. Absolutely a trade I would make 10 times out of 10. 
And I'm actually tempted to also include a bin of LK. Just for when we don't have a great hit chance. Because we have tonnage. And then we can drop the medium laser and small laser here. And take the clan medium pulse and the medium pulse. And we are now at a heat delta of four with two tons remaining. And there's one thing absolutely missing here. Ah, uh, we already used the ECM. Oh well. Beagle probe. Boom. And then we get another half ton of armor and... Call that good to go. All right, so we got 120 in the front, 100 on the side torsos. 110 in the legs. We have a shield side, which unfortunately, because it is an XL engine, it's not that much of a shield side, but it's somewhat of a shield side. Um, yeah, uh, we could actually even throw the exchanger in. Why not? Boom. Oh, we already have an exchanger. Oh, <laughs> all right. Disregard. So yeah, we have a heat delta of four. Good armor. Um, don't have any other specialist slot items to slap in there, but that's fine. This is a very accurate mech. Either using the LK ammo with the pulses or just if it has a good hit chance on that turn, then dropping the acid and then the pulses but uh, the Beagle Probe is going to help us with our accuracy a lot. Sadly, it does still have basic sensors, basic cockpit, and fire control standards. So it does not have night vision. If we drop on a night mission, it's problematic. Does the UAV actually give night vision? No, I didn't think it did. Nope. Just the ability to act with Probe if you don't have a shot. We do have the ability to drop in an extra double heat sink. But honestly, like, heat delta of four is fine. Plus the 280 core gave us a lot more movement than we had. I think we were four six, and now we're six nine. So, yeah. Definitely happy to put the bigger core in this thing. Gave it better cooling. Yeah, all around, all around good. I like it. I absolutely like it. Good deal. And now we have that clan ER medium. Uh, the Phoenix Hawk, looking at it again, we have this like weird long range sniper Phoenix Hawk. It's just, <laughs> it's so weird to have like one of our tankier mechs just noping away from the enemies. Because if we get too close, if we get within I think it's a hundred, yeah, 30 meter increase. So if we're within 150 meters, our hit chance goes through the floor. But that means our optimal range is also 510 and then 420 on the larges. So yeah, we have a good amount of long range firepower here with a Beagle Probe and a Guardian. So should be able to handle itself pretty well. And yeah, absolutely no heat problems, so... Oh, right, no, no test schedule. We didn't change anything. Uh, the Locust... The Locust has plenty of heat left, so I think we're gonna put the Clan ER Medium in the Locust. Again, in the center, because it's the most protected. Uh, even though fighting in clan space, you're gonna end up with a lot of clan ER mediums. Just for the early game, I think it's better to have it protected. Also, so that if it loses its arms, if it's taking a lot of damage, we could back off and just use the <clears throat> ER medium laser for the, the 540 meter range. Yeah, that's an improvement. All right. So now we just organize things uh, like that. So in two days, automation will be complete. So that'll be two days on this, 
one day on this. So this will be down to seven, this will be down to five, this will be down to two. Automation will make the second make they work at 100%. Beautiful, it works out perfectly. Those upgrades you asked for are online, Commander. And we only have 750,000 left. We need 521,000 for the financial report. And it's not gonna be finished before we drop anyway, so no sense risking it. Just wait the last seven I'm days. And as I say, well, actually I forget to say it a lot of the time, but yeah, MechLab Monday, I'm just doing all of the changes, sweeping changes across the board immediately. Usually it's smarter to actually drop while you're doing the changes, do the changes incrementally, and then, you know, gather stuff as you go through. But, uh, yeah. I don't want to play more than one uh, mission for Mech Lab Monday, otherwise the episode would go way, way too long. Alright, pop over to the barracks. We need money for the financial report. Go ahead and give everyone four tactics for gunnery as possible. Standing by. Cannot. I'm here. Four gunnery, four tactics. Beautiful. We don't really have a punch bot. Orders. Like, all of our mechs have a lot of their weapons in their hands, so... Not gonna give anyone piloting. Training complete. Just because... I hear yeah. Receiving you. If we're punching, we're in trouble. Like, we're already in a bad shape. Mech warrior training complete. Alright. That's everyone that can be up to 4334. Three, Greetings, Commander. Come on in. Now then. I mean, I could do a priority mission, although that would mean I couldn't uh, I couldn't choose anything about it. So, yeah. Target acquisition? No. That would be a terrible idea. Ambush convoy in the Badlands? Like, I'm definitely not dropping on two and a half skull against the clans, but... Hmm... So... Target acquisition against clanners could potentially go very wrong very fast. I normally do one and a half skull missions for MechLab Monday, but in clan space, I'm not nearly that confident. <laughs> okay, so we have the choice between a traditional assassinate and a bug hunt. So the mechs escorting the assassination target are going to be really, really strong. But the target is a cicada, so we can take it down relatively easily. It's just a two-way. It's not even, like, the fastest, best defended cicada. So it's very easy to just kill it and get out. Versus a regular assassinate where most of the value is going to be in the assassination target. Let's do a bug hunt. Why not? And yeah, I know, I need sea bills for the financial report, but if this goes well enough, we should be able to, you know, drop on another mission, or theoretically, if we were to continue the playthrough, we should be able to drop on another mission. A nightshade? Is that an aerospace fighter? Large Pulse Laser Thunderbolt, which is the single big... No, it's two big hits. So, 25 damage times two. Plus one accuracy, plus one evasion, ignore. Oh no, plus one accuracy in addition to the Pulse Lasers, plus one accuracy and one evasion, ignore. That's really good. Really good. And a tag? And quad missiles? Oh boy. 
It even has a Guardian ECM and relatively decent armor for such a light VTOL. Okay. Cool. So, first things first. Who are we putting in the Phoenix Hawk? Phoenix Hawk has no recoil, I don't believe. AC2s don't have recoil, right? Correct. Does anyone have recoil, actually? No, because everyone's mostly energy. Yeah, everyone's like all energy, so there is no recoil across the board. So basically military then just means one offensive push accuracy and one bonus health. Although Blaze is reckless. Do we want a reckless mech warrior on a mech that already has evasion ignore? Like the Wyvern? Because all the pulse lasers have evasion ignore. Blaze would make that two evasion ignore. Or would we rather have Blaze make the two evasion ignore on the AC2 into three evasion ignore and give the ER Larges plus one evasion ignore? I think we're gonna go with super evasion ignore on the Wyvern. Alright, Captain Jack. Uh, Lucky, Assassin, and Pirate Wi-Fi. Plus two local ECM. 80% chance to steal 8,000 C-bills a day from you. 1% chance to steal 1 million for you. So does that mean he has been stealing C-bills from us every day? Because we've been in this for more than a month. That would be over 240,000 C-bills. I see. Well, that would explain why our finances are much tighter than I expected them to be. And he's just a lucky assassin. Okay. Alright, GV. Ex-military mech warrior, otherwise unremarkable. Lagertha is... Not good enough to warrant dropping with 3233. Uh, three, three, three. Pagan Horde. Way of the Murder Pede. Plus one punch physical accuracy. Plus 5% punch physical damage. Plus one arm mounted accuracy. Ilkhan of the Lycian. This pilot led their clan to become the Il Clan and was appointed Ilkhan for the feat. Minus one recoil, plus two offensive push accuracy. Reckless. Officer, lance sight in sensors. Dependable. Plus one resolve. So he's never going to panic out. And honestly, if anyone's going to be kicking, it's going to be the Wyvern. So... Alright, uh, Pagan Horde? Welcome to your wyvern. Blaze with her reckless is going to be in the Phoenix Hawk. And then our commander with Jinxed is going to be in the... What, which one has more damage output? Large, medium, medium. Medium, small pulse. Medium, small pulse. And medium, long. Uh... 30, 45, 60, plus 50, 110, versus 45 and 50, 95. Okay. I'm going to go into Locust. So that's uh, plus one evasion gained and max and minus one defense. Bonus to clustering also. So yeah, it definitely makes sense to put them on the pulse lasers. And then just the improved panic resist is really good to not punch out. Alright. Whisper is the last of our four three three fours. Okay, so we're gonna have to field somebody who does not have four three three four. And he's reckless. Actually, then again, no. This thing 
The Reckless, not on the Nightshade. The Nightshade needs all the evasion it can get. So I think we're going to go Whisper on the Nightshade. So we have the 4334. Bookish is good, firing, you know, longer range. Alright. Yeah, I think that's the plan. Here goes nothing. Alright, I should have actually made note which mechs had head components that could be lost. Just to keep tabs of who I don't want to punch out if necessary. Command interface initiated. Ah, this map. Alright. So we've got the VIP, the Escort, and there might also be reinforcements about. So there's their Escort. That's going to be a lance of really scary stuff. So one Skull mission, it could still be uh, medium clan mechs. Hopefully it's just light clan mechs. Oh boy. Um, so we can either start on the land bridge or we could just start in the water but our cooling is great so we actually need the land to be at the highest possible evasion uh phoenix hawk can actually start pretty far back everyone else needs to get in closer though i really hope that's no dead drops all right we should be dropping straight into it Enemy contacts. They have the initiative. Oh dear. Uh oh. Okay, that might have actually killed if it hit. <laughs> so it's not an aerospace fighter, it's a VTOL. Waiting on you, Commander. Alright. I mean the Falcon has a PPC. That's scary. Go with turbo. Also, let's give him a target that has some evasion. Okay. Long range, plus four. Into forest, plus two. Target move, plus six. So that's, uh... That's one evasion ignore we have. So you can see here, the gunnery two is at 82% base hit chance. Gunnery 3 wouldn't have been that much more, but we're getting plus 2 accuracy because it should be target move plus 8, but since he's reckless, it's target move plus 6. So the reckless actually ended up giving us better hit chance than if we just had a little bit more base accuracy, or base chance to hit. Enemy effects plus 1. What enemy effects? It's probably narrow low profile. Okay. And it hit. Nice. Nice. Yes, Commander. Nightshade. Yeah, we need that six evasion. Because this thing has little to no armor. Copy that. Alright. Hello, Falcon. I think we save our one shot until we have much higher accuracy. Alright. One of the two shots hit. Nice. Ow. Yep. 60 damage. That's a clan ER PPC. Also, that's a summoner. Did not even notice. Yeah, that's a 70 ton clan mech. Wow. Also a Hellbringer. Also a heavy, I believe. I believe that's also like a 70, 75 ton mech. And there's actually two cicadas. So I need to make sure I kill the correct bug. Uh, and this guy has a snub and two mediums. Yes, Commander. Alright. So let's begin. work on the summoner, I think. We need to kill the summoner before we get close. That's also an LB-20 on the Hellbringer. Oh boy. 
<laughs> oh, I'm not happy about this. That's an LB20 on the Hellbringer. If we get, if we cross here, and we get into their optimal range, we are going to die. And since they're clan mechs, then destroying side torso doesn't matter. We have to destroy center, or both side torsos. You know what? I I need to get started on the summoner. Because while the LB20 is dangerous, you know, 100 damage pen point, what's also damn dangerous is an ER large, a clan ER PPC, which the clan ER PPC is 75 damage pen point. And then all the SRMs. That's 24 SRMs. With each one doing 8 damage, that's a lot more than 100 damage. So. And we only did... I was about to complain about only doing 20 damage, but that was a headshot. Alright. And of course, since it's clans, there's uh, 5 per lance. That's a Timberwolf? Are you serious? This is a one skull mission. Oh boy. Um. Alright. What's up, boss? Alright. So. I'm gonna bump the acid to the front. And we actually can't get in range of. Is LK longer range? No. Oh, this is bad. This is so bad. And we're also lining up for stray shots quite badly. On my way, double time. Because, you know, we kind of have to crossing this narrow land bridge. I copy. If we can take the summoner down... But then the... <laughs> the Timberwolf with its LRMs are going to do... Be dangerous. Hellbringer for some reason doing nothing. I don't understand, but I'll take it. Alright, five evasion on the locust. And we can either shoot the ER medium or the ER medium and two mediums. I think I just need to focus fire. Confirmed. <laughs> oh, okay. That's fine. I should have just shot the summoner or the hellbringer, I guess. Ah, there's also a salamander. Okay. What do you need? A falcon has backed off. I don't really care. And I cannot get direct line of sight to the cicada that's our primary target because the other cicada got in front of it. And then again, we have the problem of I really don't want to get shredded in short range. That being said, I can start working on the Hellbringer's back with five evasion. Confirmed. Here's hoping I can dodge some bullets. Roger. On the bright side, the Locust is being piloted by our commander, so plot armor cannot die. And of course, the Salamander brings heat. Yep, makes sense. Commander. Oh boy, that's nice. Oh yeah, that's nice. I know it's probably asking a bit much, but do we also have multi-target? <laughs> if we had multi-target, that would have been... I could tag the summoner while unloading on the Hellbringer. Here's hoping. Engine crit. That's Unsteady. Right, Waiting for orders. Okay. 
Okay, Phoenix Hawk. Continuing to fire on the summoner. Roger. Alright. Yeah, Timberwolves are scary. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm taking internal damage. Waiting for orders. Alright. Cannot get into the back of the summoner. I can go for three evasion. Oh jeez, it's the large heavy laser timber wolf too. That's so scary. That needs to go. But again, SRMs out of range. Uh, you know what? Okay. Location confirmed. Only two evasion. Very dangerous. But acknowledge. Okay, we got him open. Unfortunately, he's probably going to take his turn now. No, Hellbringer's going to go first. Okay. Wow. Dodging bullets. Dodging bullets. What can I do for you? I hate this, just just for the record. I absolutely hate this. Only getting two evasion on a light mech, on a 20 tonner. But... I need to at least try to take some of his weapons offline. 6535s, 6539s, okay. Moving to position. Only getting two evasion, hoping against all odds to take the arm. Unfortunate. I was hoping either a head hit for more injuries or taking the arm off. But he is only shooting at the Phoenix Hawk. Reporting serious armor loss. Okay. Alright. Whew. And cicadas just be cicadas. Unless built well, cicadas don't do much. And two A's are not well built. Damage is light. Alright. So, first things first. Turn 22, the Falcon. Barely missing. Salamanders. Oh boy. Alright. Only 12 heat. Okay. Alright, so I'm aiming for the summoner. Or rather, I'm trying to aim for the summoner. Which means I need to move to this exact position. And hopefully... Fire an owl nope. <laughs> Not enough. Not enough. Ow. Alright, so Phoenix Hawk is... Um, I'm losing armor bad. In bad shape. Waiting on you, Commander. Yeah, clan heavies. Clan heavies. Very dangerous. Um... Again, this is the other cicada that I don't care about. That one up there is the one I'm trying to kill. Um, I 
can shoot the summoner from the side and in doing so line up perfectly with the wyvern for stray shots and again only get two evasion with a 20 ton mech. That being said, Moving out. I think it's still the best play. This summoner is taking way too much damage to take down though. We, we need some crits or something like really soon. Yep. That's a Timberwolf, by the way. <laughs> a Timberwolf we still have no idea how to deal with. Or rather, have no way to deal with, really. I mean, I could try to start work on the Cicada. It does need to die sooner than later. That way we know where the evac point is, so if nothing else, we can at least try to complete the mission. And yeah, hit chance is fine. Alright, there's about, what, 10-15% of its armor? Alright. Yeah, Locust. You are on the hunt for the Cicada. And hopefully the bigger guys will just ignore our little guys. Yeah, ATM doing 12 damage, so high explosive missiles. Although the heat is starting to build up. Not on the Timberwolf, though, because the Timberwolf has only been fired. You know? It might actually not be firing its large heavy lasers specifically because the hot biome is so hot. It might not be capable of firing the large heavies at all. Our target is bugging out. Uh -oh. Stop it before it gets away. Yeah, okay. Ow. Falcon's back in the fight. Wyvern soaking the heat this time. That's not good. I'm starting to cook. So I think I'm gonna pull the Phoenix Hawk back. Wow. It missed the Minimal two evasion standard. thorn. Standing by. It cannot get into the cover. Unfortunate. I mean... If I could just get behind the Hellbringer again. On my way. Okay. Definitely going Vigilant since we only have one evasion. Oof. <sighs> Turning off the Clan Pulse. Just firing the SRMs. Okay. He's open in the back. 16.9. Yeah, no, I'd rather take the 21.7s against the Timberwolf. Okay. This cicada. Two mediums. Are you serious? <laughs> As if this wasn't already hard enough. As if this wasn't already hard enough. Alright. Falling back. Oh wow, and it's center that's open. Okay. Roger. Falling back, moving to drop stability damage, and firing on the summoner. Again. All weapons are good. He's unsettled. At least there's that. This Timberwolf is causing us to have such a bad day. Blue team, unit down. Oh, jeez. If it wasn't for the Timberwolf, I actually Waiting think we would be fine. But just Clan LRM40 is so strong. Alright, Cicada. I'm gonna kick you. 
Because if I can if I can take your leg off, you die really easily. Not a legging. Critical hit, Commander. So close. Yep. Yep. We got in range of the SRMs. So that's like all the Thorns weapons, right? No. No, no. The Thorn is the one that has the weapons on the left arm. Alright. I mean... Yes? All right, full speed. We're gonna at least accomplish the mission. It was probably a bad idea okay, I'm to go for a one skull in clan space. Wow, that actually didn't even do the job. I was really hoping for a leg there. Okay. Systems holding. Yes, Commander. I really wonder where the evac's gonna be. On the move, full speed. All right, Cicada is already really open, so this is absolutely a time to shift to LK, and we actually cannot fire everything. So this is 14 heat. This is 11. This does two more damage per pulse. Yeah. Side torso down. I think I hit something good. And he punched out. All right. Oh jeez. That's our evac point. Darius, you're not even trying. Reporting light damage. You're not even trying at this point. What is the worst possible place we could put the evac point? Let's put it there. We're down a mech. Yep. XL engines. XL engines are dangerous. I mean, at this point, I actually don't even know if I can complete the mission. I legitimately don't know if I can complete the mission. Um... I have to move to drop the stability damage, because if I get knocked in steady, I'm dead. Just flat out. Alright. I mean, honestly, I think I might just be dead anyway, but... Copy that. Uh... <laughs> Negative damage. Yeah, so we are down to just the Wyvern, basically. The Locust is going to explode as soon as somebody breathes on it. They're flanking. Damage minimal. I mean, is there a chance to go around? No, there's no chance to go around. The only way to the evac point is straight through. That is the only way to get to the evac point, is to go straight through them. Alright. So yeah. There goes the Locust. The unit. And the moral of today's story is, even if it's a one skull mission, bug hunts can still drop heavies. I honestly didn't realize that a bug hunt could drop heavies on a one skull mission. Otherwise, I wouldn't have. Oof. Yep. Yep. Mission failed. All right. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's uh that's a wipe. That's the end of the playthrough. Good day. Uh good luck next time. Yeah. I'm curious what all we lost. Okay, we definitely lost the nightshade. 305,048 days and all the XLs are gone. So, 
like I said, that's that's the end of the playthrough. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, this is absolutely a restart at this point. Or, I'm going to hop in the Wayback Machine and we're going to try the other One Skull Assassinate and see if it also drops heavy clan mechs. I don't think it will. So, let's try that one. Alright, so I went in the Wayback Machine and we're going to try this other Assassinate. <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully this goes better. So this should be the more standard, one big scary target surrounded by a bunch of less scary targets. And we're going to see how this goes. Alright, let's see what we can see. Okay, it actually looks like the supporting lance is actually quite far away from the target. That is absolutely ideal. Absolutely ideal. So we can hopefully take out the priority target before we have to worry about the other enemies. Alternatively, we could drop and deal with the other enemies, then worry about the primary target. Instead of having to have them in our back. Since the primary target's in the corner up in the mountains like this, yeah, if we engage him first, our, the entire support lance will be in our back. So, all right, I guess let's commit to actually just killing the entire support lance. Actually, very worrisome. I can't even drop on this high ground here. So I don't know if this support lance is like really spread out or if there's two support lances. Uh, all right. I am actually going to drop way back here. The 20 tonners in the back. Alright, let's see what we see. Okay, we see nothing, so they're going to take one turn moving. Actually, I dropped the locust forward. That's right, the nightshade was in the back. Alright. I'm going to reserve until one of them moves, which will give us sensors. That's a salamander. It's also a solitaire. So the nice thing about the solitaire is that it's... Even though it drops for the clanners... Oh, never mind. It is a clan mech. Although it's already damaged. Huh. Oh, right. It should have already gotten, uh... It should have already moved since... We are in... Turn 2. So I should actually have a hit chance here. That is a hit chance. Alright. It has a large heavy laser. Which is dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Yes, Commander. But it does appear to be that it uh words. It does appear that this is the only supporting lance. Alright. Understood. Moving fast. Wyvern going over some rough terrain, not ideal. But is what it is. And here we go. Uh, I will actually switch to LK here. No, I won't. 6.3% chance different. No, 5.3%. I'd rather up the acid. Not a kill. Critical hit, Commander. Engine crit does mean he'll be generating an extra 15 heat per turn. So at least there's that. But he has a large heavy laser. That's yep. 80 damage pinpoint if I don't kill him. Locus getting into optimal range with everything. And hopefully finishing him off. This should be. Nope. Uh-oh. Alright. 80 damage pinpoint. 
Who are you shooting at? Nice. Double miss. Love to see it. Love to see it. And we're actually going to start on the Ripper, I think. With our Phoenix Hawk. Super long range. Very little armor on the Ripper, so... Fire yep. All it takes is one hit. Nice. That's a kiss. I hear ya. All right. Then we have our thorn. Uh, cannot get into the solitaire's front, unfortunately. Go into Do have a really good hit chance on him, though. Commencing alpha strike. Which makes me wonder. All right. There he goes. Gotcha. Which makes me really wonder if he actually had dropped spawn protection or if those hit chances were me firing into spawn protection. But yeah, so again, the plan since we dropped over here is to destroy the supporting lance, then go deal with the target. Since the target is so far away and we would have to either drop between them or do this. On the bright side, it does seem like this is an appropriate challenge for a uh, for a one skull mission. I think the Shamash is actually better target here. I just realized that was only five. I thought that was six. I misread. Alright. So we have uh, less evasion than I thought we were going to. That's not good. Yeah. Alright. Locust can also get five and shoot the Shamash. Bugging out. Copy that. Okay. <sighs> battle armor. Who is going to fight the battle armor? I mean, those are hit chances. Those are hit chances. So, yeah, salamanders almost always bring... Flamers and Cinderi SRMs. Yep. They're dangerous. If only because they can overheat you very easily. I'm here. Okay, Phoenix Hawk definitely continuing to fire at long range. What are the hit chances here? 14.7s. I mean. Sure. Fire an okay, hit front, not side. Uh oh. That's a swarm attack. Watch my heat. I thought I was out of range of the swarm. That's not good. That's not good at all. I thought I was out of range of their swarm attack. Got it. Max all right. Speed, no shooting. That's fine. That's fine. So our wyvern's going to need to, like, roll around on the ground or whatever. I've got an enemy flanking to the side. Okay, Ripper has a pulse laser. I'm not too worried about that. What's up, boss? This battle armor is a problem, though. Uh, especially since we're also really hot. Okay. Self knockdown to remove swarming battle armor. SWAT is attempt to use hands limbs. Do we even have hands on the wyvern? Yes, we do. Uh, 75.5%, 53.3%. Do fancy footworks and barrel rolls to get rid of little grabby boys, but it's hard to shoot straight. 
You know what? Let's try it. I've never tried it. Copy that. It did not work. <laughs> Alright. I'm taking heat damage. Alright, and I can't shoot them. Shoot them while they're on him. Okay. So the battle armor might just kill one of our mechs because I don't know how to deal with it. Not a kill. Unfortunate. Open on the side. Alright, Thorn. He's already in the correct side. I read you, Commander. Moving out. Alright, kill this guy. All weapons are go. Boom. Nice. Oh. Stay down. Just the battle armor that's gonna be a serious problem here. I hate battle armor so much. I did not expect them to be able to swarm from that far away. Okay. He has turned so that his front is away from me. But I actually would rather shoot him in the side than in the back. Very well. I'll take the shot I got. Still a kill. Alright, so now I just need to get rid of this battle armor. Okay. Shutting down. My heat gauge is pegged. What do I do about them now? Like, I can't shoot them. Heading out. What do you need? Reserving what action. What do I do? Standing by. Wow, they're, yeah, they're going to kill him. They're going to kill him. Over the red line. Heat damage. I think I just need to punch him out. On the bright side, he doesn't lose anything, but then we're down a mech. Alright. Ready for order. So if I try to restart. Yeah. Goodbye. Go home. Punching out. Alright. Just kill them, please. Got past the armor. All of you just kill them. I'm receiving you. Roger. I'm even gonna go over here. here. I need them to die. On my heat commander. I need them to die right now. They're not gonna die. All weapons are go. I've killed one of them. Critical hit, Commander. I'm here. Order acknowledged. Drop one of the large lasers. Reporting critical hit. Okay. Are they gonna swarm again? No. All right. They should be dead now, right? Oh, that wasn't them. That was the priority target. Scored a critical. Receiving you. Got the angle. Okay. So they successfully took down one of our mechs. Waiting for orders. With a combination of heat and swarming. Cool. All right, whatever. Oh, let's get on with it then. 
Let's get visuals with the nightshade as soon as we can. I think he was up here in the area around these uh, this mineral field. Yes, Commander. Good to go. Moving fast. Just see if I can get uh, eyes on him. Wonder what we're up against. I'm here. Can't believe the power armor made me punch out or battle armor. Receiving you. Whatever. It's fine. Um, I mean, I really don't want to be shot at before I can shoot at him. I don't know where he is. So I'm going to reserve with my VTOL until one of my mechs can hopefully get sensors on him. Aye, aye. Going full throttle. So the problem with the VTOL, obviously, is that if it gets hit despite its 7 evasion, it's a bad time. Waiting for orders. Okay. Sprinting. He is not showing up on sensors. I'm beginning to think maybe he's stealth. Awaiting orders. I'm beginning to think maybe he's stealth. Roger that. Full speed. All right. It's a Falcon 4NB PP2, whatever that is. But I have a hit chance. Okay. No short range missiles remaining. Stand I probably should have saved. I definitely should have saved my uh, Confirmed. quad missiles until he wasn't braced. That was just a mistake on my part. Reporting. I am quite enjoying our uh, long range sniper feeding sock though. Alright, medium pulse laser destroyed, so he's not even running clan tech. Good to go. Huh. He's not even running clan tech. I see. I'm here. Locust getting six evasion. And yep. Aye aye. Engaging target. Okay. That's fine. Negative damage. So I imagine the evasive maneuver, or whatever that we tried to get the battle armor off, probably has a chance to succeed based on how many hexes you move. You. But because we were overheating, it could only move one hex. Pretty sure that's uh, why that went so badly. Obviously, the smarter thing to do would have been to roll. Receiving you. Get on the ground and hope they come off. Moving to position. Locking on. All right. So there's an arm and a side torso down, and he punches out. Beautiful. Mission successful. So 142,000. Not very much of a payoff, and our wyvern took so much damage from the battle armor. A hundred and four damage from the battle armor. In the center torso, anyway. And then we had to punch it out. Again, because of the battle armor. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, I don't care about the solitaire. They're gonna give me clan endo. Clan small lasers, double heat sinks, sure. Why not? Don't care about any of the parts. Um... Clan medium pulse laser, absolutely. Another ER large laser is actually interesting as well. Uh, battle computer energy, sounds good. Clan cockpit actually is an upgrade for the one mech we have not running. 
um, not running the... Actually, I think all of our mechs have Indo, but I don't think they're all running Pharaoh. Pretty sure they're all running Indo, but yeah, the, the SLCD, SLDF uh, head components are, in my opinion, better than the Cockpit Clan because the Cockpit SLDF gives piloting and tactics. So it makes you better at melee, and it also makes you better at shooting because of the sensors. There's a clan mask, that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so... Although clan mask is better late game, since it has the higher fail chance on activation and the lower fail chance on consecutive turns. So it's easier to get a inner sphere mask to the point where you can turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off to keep it at 0% fail chance. Whereas the clan mask, it's harder to turn on the first time, but once it's on, it stays on longer. So basically, an uh, inner sphere mask is good up uh, is better than a clan mask up until you have about eight or higher piloting, including from you know the cockpit and piloting A and B and all that sort of stuff. Once you get about eight plus, that's where the clan mask is better. It is also lighter, so yeah. If you're willing to take the crits, then using it early is fine. But yeah, I think the Inner Sphere Pharaoh and Clan Pharaoh is the best tonnage upgrade we can get. Uh, Clan Medium Pulse, pretty sure we can immediately slot that in in place of an Inner Sphere Medium Pulse, and the Clan Cockpit, we can immediately make, make use of that as well. Um, we could opt for the Clan Fire Control Standard instead of the Medium Pulse. But I think the medium pulse... Then again, more heat and it only does two extra damage per per tick. Uh, so it's a total of six extra damage for the same tonnage. But it generates, I think, three more heat. It does have better range as well. But I don't know. I think, I think maybe the uh, clan fire control is actually... Oh, no, no, no. Clan fire control doesn't give night vision. It only gives gunnery. Hmm. I honestly prefer the Fire Control's SLDF rather than Clan for the night vision. Yeah, let's do that. Alright, get a bunch of parts, get a bunch of a bunch of Clan ER small lasers. Nine of them. Uh, we get the Pulse Laser Magna, which I'm not actually a fan of. It, it turns it into really, really small instances of damage. There's a lot of them, but they're very, very small. So, especially against any kind of damage reduction, it turns into ones very quickly. We did get the battle computer energy. We did not get the targeting computer to be able to use it. Uh, engine core 70. Um, ba -ba -ba. Jump jets. We did get the clan mask. We did get the clan sensors. Single heat sink cooling structure structure. Goodbye. All right, let's see what we can do with our mechs now. All right, so that cost us 40,000 repairs, mostly the wipe, actually entirely the wyvern. Nobody else took damage. All right. <laughs> Commander, be with you All right, so Phoenix Hawk. We can now slot in some Pharaoh, which gives us one ton. And honestly, with that one ton, by the way, the Exchanger would have actually served us very well there because the Phoenix Hawk was running a little toasty. So with the Pharaoh, we have the option of either bringing an extra medium laser, which is not great, or armoring up. I will absolutely take a full ton of armor. Actually, a little bit more than a full ton. Because, yeah, the the more armor we get, the more the Pharaoh reduces the tonnage by. Go ahead and bump up the leg that has the ammo in it all the way. Can we actually get one more? Yes. Yes, we can. Alright. I mean, that's, that's good. 
that right there is a solid sniper. We don't really have to worry about back armor. Actually, you know what? I'm even going to go as far as to drop the back armor to fully, to fully increase the front armor. Because if anything ever gets behind this Phoenix Hawk, we've done something terribly wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Just like that. Because if, again, this thing should be staying way back, sniping from a long, long range. Anything gets behind it, we've messed up horribly. And that's that. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and wait the 10 days for the Wyvern to be ready. Because that's obviously the other mech that we want the majority of the upgrades to go to. I wrapped up that right. you asked Hop right. over to the mech bay. The yes, yes, I know. Wyvern's head got crit because we had to punch out. Now then. Clan Pharaoh. So, our leg now has case, which is more important, obviously, on the Wyvern than on the, uh, on the Phoenix Hawk, because we have twice as much, including the Acid, which actually is not. I thought it was volatile. It is not. Okay, cool. In any case, we have a lot of ammo in our leg, as compared to 15 AC2 or AC shots. Which, obviously, every time we fire an AC2 shot, it's reducing the explosive potential. But, at any time, we're still going to have at least 100 shots left in our leg. That's, you know, a thousand damage, basically. If they cook off, or if they, you know, blow up. So, having case on the Wyvern is much more important than having case on the, uh, on the Phoenix Hawk. And now, as I said, Clan Cockpit, Clan Sensors, FC, uh, Fire Control Standard SLDF. And now this mech is a lot better. And we have an extra ton, which again, I think is just going to go to armor. I think is absolutely just going to go to armor. Uh, if I had ECM, I would love to put some ECM in this thing, but I do not. Again, I'd rather have the side torsos better armored because there's less structure. So that's 110 to destroy either side torso from the back, and it's 113 to destroy the center torso. So if something gets behind us, then, yeah, we are we are equally spread across of trying to not get destroyed. All right, and yeah, again the medium pulse laser. If I had gotten the clan medium pulse, I could have potentially considered sticking it in there. But then again, we're already on the verge of too hot, so probably would have been a bad idea anyway. All right, yeah, that's a build. And I believe that's both the pharaohs that we got. So, Indo and Indo, yeah. So everything had Indo, nothing had Pharaoh. So we were able to upgrade both the Phoenix Hawk and the Wyvern to have Pharaoh. Is there anything we can do with these guys? I mean, I was fine with the medium lasers. The medium lasers, large laser. I was completely fine with that. So that's seven. If I had, okay, so if I had an ECM, I would absolutely replace the ER large mediums with three pulse lasers and an ECM. Because I feel like that would be a lot safer of a build. And we've got a 20 tonner with an XL engine and six heat sinks in the side torsos, six double heat sinks in the side torsos. That's dangerous. That's so dangerous. 50 armor before stuff starts getting crit that can't easily be replaced.
Same thing with the Locust. Yep, same thing with the Locust. At least the Locust is able to get a little bit better evasion because of its 160 core. One thing that could be done here... One thing that could be done... Is if we dropped... All of that... And added... Uh, pulse laser... Clan ER small, Clan ER small, and then Clan ER medium. Which we don't have another Clan ER medium. And for symmetry's sake. <laughs> so another clan ER medium would be another 20 heat, which would put us at 65. So we'd still be overcooling by 7. And then a clan medium pulse laser instead of the inner spear medium pulse laser, we'd be overcooling still by 4. And we'd be doing quite a bit more damage, I think. So. The two clan ER smalls is 40, replacing one of the medium lasers. The other clan ER medium replacing the other medium laser does an extra 5. And then the medium pulse laser replacing essentially the two small pulse lasers does the same. Although a clan medium pulse laser would actually do 6 extra damage, so it would just be straight up across the board a damage increase we'd have 36 damage instead of 30 damage on pulse lasers, and we'd have 100 damage on small and medium lasers instead of just 50 damage on medium lasers. Oh no, 80 damage, because we already had the clan ER medium. But yeah, that's again if I had the other uh, clan ER medium, which wouldn't be too hard to get in clan space. Then there's also, you know, Pharaoh that could be added, uh, ECM, Probe, like, yeah. But then the, you gotta ask the question at some point, what are you willing to lose putting it in a Locust or a Thorn? Like, loading up a 20-ton mech with a lot of good stuff is just asking to lose it. But then the Oscout has one energy hard point, so it's really hard to justify it's really hard to justify putting anything really into the Oscout. Which actually, remove all the jump jets, give it a snub nose PPC, let's say. All right. And give it the three double heat sinks that it needs. We don't have them. We only have two. <laughs> yeah, the Oz Scout is just, it's such a hard to work with chassis because of the one energy hard point. So best case scenario, you put something like a large heavy laser or a large expulse laser or something that just does a ton of damage pen point and then just run it like that. In any case, <laughs> that has been your Mech Lab Monday for the week. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, have a good one.